Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Um, can everybody hear me? Uh, if, if so, please type one in the chat. Can everybody see the screen? You can type two in the chat. Yes, okay, great, thank you. Uh, it's good to, for you guys to be here. I can see a lot of familiar names in the attendee list um, and some names that are less familiar, um, but welcome. Uh, great to have you here among us. Um, today's webinar, we're gonna be talking about how to grow professionally while we're staying at home. This is a webinar uh, organized by CSAI, um, the Department of Employment Services. Um, and the Department of Immigration Support and Training. Um, my name is Aya Dufour. Um, my colleagues are here with me, Anna Romanti and Lucia. Uh, they'll be uh, with us towards the end of the webinar when we'll be uh, doing some questions and answers with you guys. So the goal of today is really to provide strategies on how to progress professionally despite the constraints imposed by the COVID-19 crisis. In the first part of the webinar, we'll be looking at the different possibilities of employment considering the current situation. And in the second part of the seminar, we'll be talking uh, about, for those of you who, who would like to stay home in this period, the things that you can do to improve professionally. So yeah, uh, we're gonna start by going over the different sectors that are actively recruiting and the different possibilities of COVID-19 related employment. And then uh, again, a few suggestions to grow professionally. For those of you who don't know, um, and actually I'm just gonna put a, a poll over here to see how many of you are familiar already with the center and how many of you are not. Uh, so if you could just take a second to answer this poll. All right, okay, so the results are coming in. I'm seeing that uh, a lot of you, it's about half-half, some of you are not familiar with CSI services. Um, so we're a social center for immigrant assistance. We were founded in 1947, which makes us the oldest center uh, to welcome refugees uh, and immigrants in Montreal. Um, we offer activities that facilitate social professional integration. So that includes, um, uh, pairing programs, employability, French language, and different activities. Um, I'll be going into more depth into all of the specific services that are offered a, a bit later on in the presentation. So um, before starting, uh, today's content is broad, it's general, uh, it's meant to cover as much ground as possible. So there is a strong possibility that uh, we won't be able to answer questions that are very specific to your profile. Um, that being said, you should not hesitate and you should contact us at all times for individual support if we haven't been able to answer any of your specific questions. Um, you can either write us an email or you can give us a phone call um, to me or Lucia or Anna at any time. It'll be a pleasure for us to assist you in any way. So the current crisis uh, has created labor needs, um, obviously in the essential services sector, but uh, strategic recruitment continues. Um, and even if there is a temporary hiring freeze, companies are continue to identify qualified candidates. And uh, therefore, you should continue to target the companies you're interested in and apply. Of course, you might receive fewer positive responses than in normal times, but you shouldn't be discouraged. Um, and if necessary, if you really need of income, you can always look for a temporary or general survival job, because that's always a possibility. So um, which sectors are, are currently recruiting? So obviously there's the health sector. Um, and, and we've seen in the past weeks, uh, there's a dire need for home care assistance. Uh, for those of you who have been keeping up with the news, you've seen that uh, a lot of the long-term uh, care centers have been as much as 50% short staff uh, for home care assistance. Um, and this has made it so that uh, hospitals are now training people 
uh, on the job for this kind of profession. So if you're wondering right now, if you're in transition between professional projects and you're considering the health sector, uh, a profession like home care assistance, uh, it's a very short time of studying and it's a very high placement rate once you finish studying. There's also a lot of COVID-19 related jobs. So, um, so if, if you've been to, for example, the grocery store or the pharmacy, you've noticed some reception workers that are there to implement health prevention measures like hand washing and social distancing. Um, so there's a lot of uh, jobs that were created specifically for uh, these measures. There's also a lot of need in the agricultural maneuvering sector. Um, typically, Quebec hires up to 3,000 foreign workers every year to work in agricultural um, area of Quebec. And this year, because the borders will be closed, there's going to be a lot of a, a labor need in this area. And so um, last week, the government announced that uh, for individuals working in agriculture, for every 25 hours worked, there'll be a $100 prime. Um, and you can go on the agricultural portal uh, to submit your candidacy. Now, obviously, a lot of the agriculture does not happen in Montreal, um, but the south shore of Montreal, saint Hyacinthe, is a big agricultural hub, and it's about a 45-minute drive from downtown Montreal. So um, if you have a car, then that's an accessible uh, venue for you. Then, obviously, the Everything that relates to essential services, so gro grocery stores, distribution centers, pharmacies, warehouses, food production and delivery companies. Um, information technology, IT remains as active as, as it was before the crisis. We've seen uh, that for people trained in web development, Java, functional analyst, application development, front end and back end programming, um, interviews and recruitment is, uh, is actively continued. Um, this is also uh, something that might be interesting for some people with some uh, basic computer science training. If you want to develop your coding skills, uh, IT is always and will always be recruiting. And then there's the telecommunications and online services, which can be interesting for those of you who want to work from home. Uh, there's more and more possibilities in that sector. All right. So where are the jobs, you may ask? <laughs> We've put together a list of um, uh, links where you can find different possibilities, different uh, job postings. We're gonna be sharing that list with you guys later on in the presentation. So you can always go back and, and click on these links and explore the different possibilities. <clears throat> but like I mentioned early, uh, this presentation isn't meant to push you guys into the labor market. Um, it's very understandable that for safety reasons, for your own health and those uh, close to you, that you would rather uh, stay home as much as possible and avoid travel. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't take the time to improve yourself and uh, explore uh, your area of expertise. Um, so right now is a good time to define your career aspirations and reflect on your competitiveness as a candidate. Um, it's a good time to deepen your knowledge of your area of expertise and to expand your network. Uh, we'll be going into more depth about that, how that can be done online in our next webinar. So, so do stay tuned about expanding your network. Um, but in short, uh, this time is good to enrich your knowledge of yourself and your area of expertise. And, and this is true at all times, even when we're not in the middle of a pandemic crisis. It's, it's always good to be aware of your strengths and your weaknesses, and also be aware of the different possibilities in your area. It's just that right now, while you're at home, you should be making the time, even if, if it can be a bit disorienting and, and demotivating to see everything that's happening, uh, but making the time to really try to make your professional projects uh, go forward. Um, so a first step is always to do a skills assessment. Uh, you want to be able to assess your own skills. It's a personal approach. You want to do an inventory, uh, an evaluation of the professional and personal skills that you have developed in your professional life. Um, so now is a good time to step back and uh, make sense of the experience that you've accumulated and measure how far you've come. Um, this will help you to improve your self-confidence and you'll be able to reflect on your strengths. And in the end, you'll develop a more competitive and coherent presentation of yourself for future recruiters. Um, so how this is actually done, uh, it's as simple as taking down a sheet and writing 
uh, your general knowledge, your technical knowledge, and your personal knowledge. So the general knowledge includes any training or education or diploma that you might have achieved. Um, the technical knowledge is the um, knowledge that you've gained through internships or professional experiences. And personal knowledge is things that relate to behavior or emotional intelligence. Um, so I'll be using a, a general example to illustrate what I'm trying to say here. If we take the example of the profession of uh, um, accounting clerk, if someone who's an accounting clerk might have education in accounting, maybe they've done a training in a specific type of software, maybe they've done a diploma on a certain kind of accounting norm, uh, through internships or professional experiences, maybe they've done work with consultancy, maybe they've done work uh, with audits, maybe they've done work with uh, tax returns. Uh, and personal knowledge, uh, maybe an accounting clerk is someone who's highly organized or can work very effectively under pressure. Um, so we're really kind of doing a, a kind of a, a grocery list of the different skills that are acquired in pr school settings, professional settings, and personal settings. If you're wondering of different examples of skills, um, we're talking about working as a team, uh, being productive, uh, having a sense of empathy, a sense of listening, being able to write proposals, responding to calls for tenders, recruitments, or budget management. Obviously, there are some things here that are going to be very specific or um, valued in your area of expertise. Um, in the list, we've included uh, um, a list of, uh, of different qualities to give you some inspiration. Um, and you can go here after the presentation and try to have a look which of these work skills apply to you the most. Sometimes it can be hard to, to identify our own strengths. So if that's the case for you, you can always ask a family member what they think your strongest points are. And I'm sure it'll be a pleasure for them to, to give you answers on that. All right, so going forward. Once you've really assessed uh, your own individual profile, your own competitiveness as a candidate, it's a good time to start doing uh, research uh, information about the labor market. You want to start broadly. You want to start with something very general. Uh, so a good place to start is the uh, information about the labor market database. Uh, you'll be able to find this uh, again in the PDF that we'll be sharing at the end of the webinar. Um, we can have a look together here on my computer. This is, the, um, this is the, the database I was talking about, so the labor market. You can explore a trade or an occupation. So if we click here, we go uh, in the search for trades and occupation. Uh, again, let's continue with our accounting clerk example. So I'm just going to type in accounting clerk. And I'm going to do a search. Uh, it's going to give me some results. Uh, the one that I think relates more to my profile is the first one, accounting and related clerks. So I can have a read here, see what is the minimum income that I can expect from this profession? What's the maximum income that I can expect? This information is crucial to help you decide whether the revenue from this job will be sufficient to meet your financial needs. It's also good information about the job prospects uh, in the future. So if you're contemplating, for example, doing a training, having an idea about the job prospects is very important. There's also a lot of information about the nature of the work and the main duties. This is really relevant if you have a lot of experience in your home country and you're, you're a newcomer to Canada and you want to assess the differences between the profession in your country and the profession as it is exercised in Canada. Um, there's also the possibility of viewing all of the job titles, so you'll have a lot of different keywords that you can use when you're using different databases for uh, job offers. So an accounting clerk might also be called an audit clerk or a currency sorter. So you can go here and try to see which um, term applies most to you, your ambitions and your experience. There's also the possibility of finding online placement. So much like Indeed or those other job aggregating websites, uh, Emploi Québec also has a database with all of the job offers that you can find here by region. This is also helpful for some of you who are considering perhaps moving out of Montreal. You'll be able to see where your profession is most in demand outside of Montreal. Okay, 
So going back to the presentation, you, you also want to get to know the companies in your field. And a good way to do that is to try to find a directory of companies. Um, you can just go ahead and type some keywords. Um, for accounting, it's a bit tricky because the, the, the truth is that every company needs an accountant. So it's not like there's going to be one company of accountants, although there will be, for example, uh, consultancy cabinets of accountants. Um, if you go on Google and type directory accounting companies, you might find a list like this one where you have um, some of the most important uh, consultancy cabinets in Montreal. And this might give you uh, some ideas of uh, companies who on websites that you can go, you can look on the career section and see if there are any openings that match your skills. You can also uh, try to, as much as possible to find specialized websites. So what I mean by specialized websites is, um, you know, we, we all know the familiar ones like Indeed, Jobilico, Jobboom, Nuvo. All of these job aggregating websites, they have jobs for every field. But ideally, you want to find a website that has publications specifically for your field. Um, so again, continuing with the accounting example, we're looking here, accountingjobs.ca, and we'll find a lot of different uh, job postings specifically for accountants. Uh, if, if you're looking for a place um, to find um, specialized websites that are specific to your area, I would recommend this list that was put together by um, the Ministry of Work and Labour. Um, so unfortunately, it's only available in French, but if you're already familiar with some of the keywords in your area in French, you can still make good use of this repertory. So you would go here in the little um, globe that's specialized websites by sector. And you can see here, for example, if I was again an accountant, here's a list of all of the specialized websites in accounting. You'll be able to find that for all of the, of the different sectors in Quebec. It's, it's a very um, comprehensive list. So I encourage you to have a look and uh, try as much as possible to translate your, your terms if you're not familiar with French. So um, by doing this exercise, you will become more knowledgeable about the working environments and the working conditions that are associated with it. You'll know what skills to showcase in both your presentation, for example, in your resume and your cover letter, and throughout the job search process. So that includes the, the interview. And equally important, this exercise will help you determine what new skills need to be developed for you to stand out as a candidate. Um, so, for example, uh, going back to, to my accounting clerk, um, if I, while I'm doing some research, I'm browsing different uh, job offers, I keep seeing that in Quebec accounting, you really need to know about Stage 50 software. Well, while I'm staying at home during this pandemic, it would be a good time for me to learn how to do this software. And there are several platforms on which you can uh, take classes or uh, trainings to improve those skills that you've identified in your search process. Uh, we've put some up here on the presentation. They will be included in the PDF at the end of the presentation. Um, one that I think is very good is LinkedIn uh, and Udemy. Uh, LinkedIn Premium has access to all of the different courses. Um, premium is a bit expensive, but if you sign up for LinkedIn, you have a free month trial. And so you can make use of that trial to take as many courses as possible. Um, and these courses are in different areas. We're talking about technology, creativity, and business. Um, and then there's Udemy, which has a much wider range of uh, course offering with over 100,000 videos of uh, e-learning for affordable prices. It's also a good time to improve your French. <laughs> it's always a good time to improve the French. Um, we've put up here a list of free resources of all levels, uh, beginner, intermediate, advanced, uh, focusing on different areas like conversation, grammar, writing. Um, if, for example, you're someone who's very comfortable speaking, but you're less comfortable email writing, um, you can find exercises that are specific to whichever weakness that you've identified in your search process. Um, I want to give a special shout out to the uh, National Archives Library, the bank. Some of you might already be familiar with it. Um, it. 
they now have an online service to register as a new user. So if you are not already a user, I would recommend registering with them because uh, users have access to a wide range of uh, language learning softwares um, that are very high quality. Um, you can also, if, you're, if it's the English that you're feeling a bit less uh, secure about, there's a lot of different uh, websites here that we've put up as well. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, um, but they're all very high quality online courses. And I, I know we spoke a lot about um, improving yourself continuously, but it's really important to take care of yourself as well. Um, you want to come out of this crisis with resilience. You want to be uh, rested and, and fresh to tackle a difficult job search. Um, so, so do take up meditative activities like yoga or meditation. Um, if, if you want to have more cultural stimulation, my colleague Isham has been organizing happy hour cultural events on Friday evenings. Um, so if you're interested in joining that, uh, they have a very interesting conversation about local works, artists and authors. Uh, you can just send him an email and he can invite you to uh, those activities every Friday. Um, so, so yes, do arm yourself with patience. Don't feel guilty about thinking about your health and do as much as you can to keep progressing in your professional projects while you're staying at home. Um, so uh, we will now be going into, uh, oh no, sorry. <laughs> um, at any point, uh, if ever you would have, like to have some support from CSIE, you can make an appointment online on the platform. I've done a screenshot of the platform and I've put it here in the presentation so you have an idea of what it looks like. Um, you can just uh, go on the platform and put your information, your name and your email and your phone number and uh, a counselor will call you to see what your needs are and how CSIE can assist you. Uh, we're talking about uh, anything to do with help uh, with technical documents, uh, processes related to immigration procedures, for example, if you're in need of help to renew your work permit, to apply for citizenship, to apply for child support, to renew your permanent residency, um, if you need help to find housing, if you need a commissioner of oaths, um, this is all uh, services that, can, that CSIE can help with, and it will be a pleasure for a counselor to get in touch with you. Um, so we will now be going into the um, questions uh, part of the presentation. Uh, you can go in the questions platform and, and type a question. Uh, me and my colleagues are going to be alert to answering the questions that come up. Um, but if you'd rather ask your question orally, there's no problem. You can uh, simply raise your hand and I will uh, unmute your microphone. You'll be able to uh, ask your question directly. Um, thank you so much, Aya. I don't know if you can hear me. Yep. Perfect. Thank you for your presentation. I just I just wanted to say because I saw that already some people were writing some questions. Uh, hello, everybody. By the way, I'm uh, I'm Lucia. I'm uh, Aya's colleague. Um, si vous voulez poser vos questions en français parce que vous êtes plus à l'aise uh, à parler français, n'hésitez surtout pas. Uh, on est les trois ici uh, capables de vous répondre dans les deux langues officielles. Donc uh, voilà. Et avant, bonjour, je m'appelle Armin, je travaille au Centre social des deux immigrants aussi. Je remercie les deux présentateurs et présentatrices éventuellement pour, pour l'événement d'aujourd'hui. En fait, je vois qu'il y a beaucoup de gens qui posent des questions en français. Il faut juste euh, souligner qu'on a eu un webinaire ce matin sur le même sujet en français. Mais si vous avez raté l'événement, euh, il n'y a pas de problème. On va, on va mettre le lien vidéo euh, de, de, de ce webinaire sur YouTube. Alors, vous pouvez aller sur notre site web ou bien sur YouTube, CSI, 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 euh, Centre CSI, pardon, pour... Et, euh, voir la vidéo euh, de notre webinaire en français. Merci beaucoup, Armin. I, I just saw a question coming in. So, um, could you please tell us something about validation of previous studies? 
Okay. Um, so if you're talking about the comparative evaluation, um, this is something that can be done with the Ministry of Immigration. Um, so you need to send um, the, a certified copy of your diploma and transcripts uh, and a translation, if, it, if the transcripts are not in English or French, uh, to the Ministry of Immigration. And uh, within three to four months, they will send back a document that assesses your education as being equivalent uh, to an education in Quebec. There is also the possibility of using World Education Services, um, which is a third party organization that also does um, comparative evaluations. Um, the difference between the ministry evaluation and the West evaluation is that the ministry evaluation is required for the public function. So the public function is anything to do with uh, working for the government, working for the city, uh, working for the health sector or the education sector. So anything that's uh, funded by the public. Um, you will need that uh, comparative evaluation from the government. Some people prefer the West evaluation because it, it's more detailed, it's more complete. Um, it's a bit more expensive, but a lot of professional orders, and I'm thinking, for example, the Order of Engineers, um, they will uh, like the uh, West comparative evaluation. And uh, uh, the person who asked that, Ms. Bergara, if ever you have any questions specific to your education, always feel free to get in touch with us and we'll walk you through the process of comparative evaluation. Thank you. So I'm just gonna read a, uh, another question uh, right here. Um, I just want to know if there would be consultancy in education tailored for Montreal market. As searching around in the site to find good formation, it's not easy these days. Um, so, um, from what I understand of the question, um, you would like to know uh, about different education possibilities in Montreal. Um, I know that a lot of CJEPs and professional schools are holding online information sessions about their programs. Um, so, maybe it would be good to uh, stay tuned to when the program that interests you is having an information session and then you can register and ask your question to the education counselor at that time. Thank you, Aya. Uh, do you connect employees with potential employers? Um, yeah, so uh, we do have a lot of partnerships with different employers. Um, and if we have a partnership with an employer that's relevant to your profile, um, it's always a pleasure for us to introduce your candidacy to them. Um, but that being said, uh, it is rather limited in the amount of partnerships that we have. And our role is really to uh, prepare you for a job search uh, because we're not a placement agency, we're employment counselors. Thank you. I see from Gita. Hi, Gita. Uh, I want to work in agriculture field, but I don't have any car for transportation. Is there any service offered by Minister for Transportation? Um, at present time, uh, I'm not familiar of any such arrangement, but um, if ever the situation does change, um, we can take down your contact information and notify you. Um, but if you are interested in agriculture, there are some possibilities on the island of Montreal. Um, I'm thinking, for example, about Lufa Farms, um, which is a company that uses uh, the electricity of building to grow foods on rooftops. Um, and they are currently hiring uh, harvesters. Uh, they have a lot of fruits and vegetables and, and fresh produce. Um, and, and they, uh, which is a good thing, they hire Anglophone speakers. That, that was a very good question. Now, I, I didn't hear anything either about any transportation, but we can definitely look a little bit more into that. I don't know if you, Anna, on your side, have heard anything about transportation. Oui, uh, je peux répondre en français, vous traduisez? Oui, absolument. So, Anna is just going to answer your, your question, Gita, in French, and we'll, we'll translate it for you. OK. Uh, je sais que AgriJob très souvent uh, cherchait des travailleurs agricoles et que le, le fermier qui était à l'extérieur de Montréal offrait le transport. Donc, il y a des heures le matin où le fermier envoie un autobus pour chercher les travailleurs de Montréal et il les ramène le soir. 
euh, on peut se renseigner auprès d'AgriJob et aussi vous référer. Donc, si vous contactez votre conseillère au CSAI, on va s'occuper de ça pour vous. So, so yes, from from what I from what I understand that Anna was saying is that AgriJob uh, have has some farmers who do offer transportation. They probably have a pickup um, in some place in Montreal in the morning, and they will bring you back uh, at night. We we'll just have to look a little bit more into that, and uh, we'll contact you to give you the uh, the exact information. Merci, Anna. Yeah, avec plaisir. Uh, another question here. I have been finding it difficult to find a job that does not require French. Uh, I'm learning French, but it take it's taking time. Yeah, um, obviously language acquisition is a very time taking uh, venture, um, but good on you for putting the effort into it. And I promise that if you keep with it, uh, you will reap the rewards of it. Um, That being said, it is possible to find work without speaking French. You would just have to avoid positions where you uh, have to interact with customers and clients. Um, uh, so anything to do with warehouses, for example, uh, or again, in the agricultural sector might be easier uh, than working, for example, as a cashier clerk in a grocery store. Thank you, Aya. Uh, another question uh, from Mr. Jude. Hi, CSI team. Thanks for this. Uh, according to your Quebec job market knowledge, does it give relevance to the experience someone has outside of Canada? Hi, Jude. Um, I, good to see that you're attending today. <laughs> I hope that you and your family are doing well. Um, so uh, about the experience outside of Canada, um, I would hope that uh, it's recognized uh, as relevant because it is. It's not because it happened outside of Canada that it's not relevant. Um, so I don't know, Lucia, if you want to if you want to uh, jump into this, but I, I would go ahead and talk about my experience as if it had um Uh, because it is relevant so it's talk about it relevant. it's definitely yeah. relevant you didn't do this for for nothing every single experience every skill you developed either in china or in afghanistan or in colombia it, it all matters it's just now it will be important to know how to present this experience and for this aya anna and myself can do that for you we can help you with uh With giving you some tips on how to to uh, to show uh, to give value to that experience because it has an enormous amount of value. Yeah, and and to to bounce off what Lucia just said, I find that a lot of our job is just to translate uh, experiences abroad into terms that uh, Canadian employers can understand. Uh, so often it's about using the right terms, the right words, uh, and using. Um, examples of experiences that are similar to what a person would be doing here. So uh, when we were looking earlier on the information about the data, uh, about the labor market, um, we were looking at the different duties for a specific profession. And I mentioned that this is a good place to look at the differences between the experience in your home country and the experience that you have, uh, that and the, the requirements of the job here in Canada. Um, so, Knowing the difference uh, really goes a long way into showing that you understand uh, the differences between what was required abroad and what is required here. And uh, that's really convincing to a Canadian employer. Thank you. Um, another question that we also had this morning in, uh, in the French session is, um, is, what are the courses available for refugee claimants uh, um, that can help them get Uh, get a job um, for for personally for professional training for going back to uh, to CJP or for going back to university for for a refugee claimant. I, I personally think it's better just to wait until you you get your acceptance letter. I, I think that the the cost of the class will be uh, would be less. Um, that being said, uh, at the at the end of this uh, webinar, Aya was showing us a little bit of um, 
different tools, different websites where we can get interesting uh, information or uh, some free webinars or some 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 training, some classes that are not too expensive. I encourage you to go over those uh, those websites and, and see if there's anything that might be interesting for you. Uh, I don't know if uh, Anna or Aya, you wanted to add something on this. No, yeah, I think you, you covered it. Um, really, if, if you don't have um, residency in Quebec, I do not recommend taking a course because you'll be paying an astronomical sum uh, for, and, and if you just wait to get an acceptance letter, um, you'll be paying much, much less. Uh, just to give you an example, um, an, a DEP without a, a permanent residency can cost up to 25000 um, And if you're a resident, then that amount goes to uh, less than 2000 for most cases, for most programs. Um, so the difference is, is really enormous. Uh, thank you. I, I, I have um, a, a big question here. It's from uh, somebody who has a visitor visa. Uh, and doesn't have a work permit, but they have the CSQ. Uh, the question is, could they work in agriculture? Because right now the agriculture does need a lot of workers. Um, Je peux um, oui. Ouais. En fait, pour travail, même pour le travail agricole, vous avez besoin d'un permis de travail. Donc, il faut faire la demande maintenant. Euh, on peut se renseigner pour vous et si vous nous laissez votre adresse de courriel, vous dire s'il y a des facilités pour le permis de travail. Je ne pourrais pas le dire tout de suite, mais je sais que pour n'importe quel travail, euh, vous avez besoin au Canada, vous avez besoin d'un permis de travail. So the, the, the short answer here that, that Anna gave is for, for any kind of job, you absolutely need a work permit. Um, if, you, if you would like, we encourage you just to contact us. We can help you a little bit more um, uh, on the side with this. Uh, but for sure, you will need to get that work permit before even uh, applying. If you let me, I'm going to ask uh, one of the questions uh, sent to us by email. Is it a good idea to ask about the hygienic and social distancing me measures undertaken by the employer during a professional uh, job interview? Um, right. Um, so, um, the goal, the Prime Minister has been saying that uh, all companies must respect uh, hygiene and social distancing measures. Um, so uh, it, it would be good if you feel comfortable with the employer during the interview to ask which measures are in place. Um, or should, asking questions during an interview always shows interest. Um, so obviously you don't want to ask it uh, in an accusing tone, but if it's something that concerns you, um, then yeah, go ahead and ask. Thank you, Aya. I have another their question here. Uh, this is super interesting, by the way. I love your questions, and I, I, I love the fact that everybody is participating. And, and don't forget, if ever we don't have time to answer all of your questions today, please don't hesitate to contact us directly by email, and we'll happily answer your questions there. Um, I have here, I study in a program that allow me to practice psychotherapy around Canada, except Quebec. Uh, would you be able to help me receive my registration from Psychology Order of Quebec, considering Canada mobility regulations? So for sure, we can definitely help you with the process of uh, entering the Order of Psychologists here in, uh, in Quebec. Uh, again, uh, you have all our contact uh, in this webinar. We'll send another thank you note at the end, you will receive it on your uh, email address. So you will have again our contact. Don't hesitate to uh, give us a call or send us a short email and we'll help you with this, uh, this procedure. There's still a lot of question coming in. Uh, does CSAI offer online advising session? Yes, for the moment, because of the situation of the pandemic, um, our office is open, but we do our consultation session uh, either on the phone or via um, 
via the web. So we're still here for you. Uh, we're here hundred percent virtually on the phone, but we we're here to help you. So don't again, don't hesitate to uh, to contact us. Um, I suggest that we open the mic for one or two participants to ask their question directly. Yes. Aya, can do you do you wanna open yeah. the mics? Okay. So yeah, I sure. think so we, we have we had a question from Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Lucia. <laughs> um so I think we have a question for from Gurpreet Singh. Would you like to open the mic for? Yeah, I'm just looking for Mr. Gurpreet in the list. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Gurpreet, uh, you can ask us your question. I'm unmuting your mic now. All right. Um, okay, so there seems to be a bit of a technical issue, but Gurpreet did write his question on. Go ahead, Lucia. Thank you, Aya. Is there anything that I can do here in my home and earn some money to cope up with the money shortness? So are there any jobs available that people can do from home? Um, we mentioned earlier that uh, there were some interesting opportunities with the telecommunications and online services. Um, uh, I, we know that uh, Jexcel and some other um, phone services company are hiring English speakers. Um, perhaps we can provide you with a list of, of those different call centers at the end of the of the webinar group read. Thank you. Um, I have a question from Isabella. Do you want to open her mic, maybe? Yeah, I'm looking for her. Actually, they have to raise their hand, so we'll be able to identify them. Uh -huh. Isabella, you. your mic is open. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Isabella. I do a master in Université de Montréal. For fall, I have to do an internship. Uh, my master is in environment health and occupational health. I think that's the way to, to say in, in English, I'm not sure. But I'd like to know if there is any way to find the internship job or something like that. <laughs> Um, thanks for your question, Isabella. It's a good question. Um, if I were you, I would take advantage of the University of Montreal's career services, um, especially with regards to your program. It's possible that they already have existing partnerships in place to help students find internships after graduation. Okay, I'm going to open the mic for Mr. and Mrs. Eileen Nikovand. Yeah. We hear you. Uh, hello, thank you for this helpful webinar. Actually, I'm an IT student, but I'm really interested in working as chair assistant or manager assistant. But they all need uh, several years of experience or related education. Is there any internship that I can do, or is there any way that I can carry on my interest? All right. Um, for such a specific objective, I think that some of the things that will work uh, best will be to target companies directly and ask for any mentorship or entry level position that match the existing skills that you have. Um, so um, when we were looking earlier about uh, the importance of finding a directory of companies that interest you, uh, once you find companies that uh, that really uh, correspond to your objectives and your projects, um, try to find a way to get in touch with them, to introduce yourself and ask if they have any um, mentorship or shadowing or entry level opportunity for you to gain experience to eventually be a more competitive candidate for the jobs that you're hoping to, to get. 
Thank you, Aya. So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Farai Chiesa, I'm going to open your mic. Okay. Um, I have another. I don't. I'm sorry, Armin. I I have another question here written down. Um, if I did equivalence evaluation with West for my foreign credentials, is it good enough to join at Quebec College or university, or should I do it again here in Quebec? Um, so uh, universities and colleges in Quebec have their own uh, evaluation committees um, as part of the admission process. Um, if you have your WES already, you can ask the admission committee if they would like you to include it in your application. Um, but you won't need to, for example, go to the Ministry of Immigration to use that equivalency uh, for college and uh, university level uh, programs. Thank you, Aya. I have a short question here also. As a refugee claimant, are you allowed to study? You are allowed to study as a refugee claimant. The only thing about this is that you will be considered as an international student. So the fees you are going to pay are those of an international student. That's why earlier we were suggesting if you are a refugee claimant for the moment, please wait until you get your acceptance letter and then apply to university or college because then you will pay the fees um, as a intern uh, student and not as an international student. Uh, there are a lot of questions here on the on the chat, Armin. If you if you don't mind, I'm just gonna yes, just uh, read one or two, one or two more. <laughs> yes, just to add, uh, as a uh, refugee yeah. claimant, you need to apply for a study permit uh, first, and then you'll be able to to uh, to study. But as uh, my colleague said, uh, you're being uh, you're going to be considered as an international student, and you need to pay uh, the full uh, tuition fees. Okay. Uh, another question here: How can I contact to, uh, you to improve my CV? Uh, Aya, if you don't mind, could you please put on your screen um, the diapositive um, <laughs> uh, that showed the, the our emails? So, so then people can see yeah. uh, see it again. Thank you so much. So, so here uh, I think you can all see it on your screen. You can you have all our three emails uh, and phone number. Um, you can choose uh, either one of us. We're we're waiting for your for your call and for your emails. Okay, I'm going to open the mic for Madam uh, for Miss Gita and then Miss Neda and then. Uh, uh, Miss Sandrine, uh, just be yes. prepared. Uh, Madame Gita, you can ask your question. Armin, I think so, some of some of the hands were were raised uh, from the beginning, and I think there might maybe the 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 people uh, raised their hands by mistake. Okay, so. Yes. Uh, Madame Neda? Madame Neda wrote on the chat uh, that she was wondering if there were any online French courses by CSI. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, I think that the, um, the French classes with the CSI, so it's the ones that are connected with the Ministry of uh, Immigration, so with the MIFI. Um, and maybe, Armin, you can correct me on this, but I think they restarted, but you already had to be registered, right? Yes, but we are going to have a conversation uh, courses in French and in English. Uh, online, uh, please check our website and our uh, Facebook page, uh, especially, and uh, we'll keep you posted about uh, uh, about uh, our uh, French and English uh, conversation courses that are going to start uh, very soon. 
Thank you so much. And those conversation classes, they're mainly um, there to improve your oral communication. So that could be very, very interesting as well, and they will be free. And uh, like my colleague were saying, just keep, uh, keep looking at our website and we'll post as soon as they open. Uh, I have another question here. Uh, I'm, uh, first of all, thank you for this helpful webinar. Thank you for being here. Uh, I am an IT student, but I'm really interested in working as chair assistant, but they all need related education and several years of experience. Is there any way to carry on my interest in this field, any internship? Um, yeah, Lucia, do you want to go ahead and answer that question? Uh, I, I, I prefer if you do it. That's why I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's, a, it's a bit tricky always to try to enter a field in which we have uh, little experience or limited experience. Um, I find, you know, for, for, for recent graduates, for example, it, finding the first job is always the hardest. Um, and for a newcomer, finding the first job is always the hardest. Um, so I, I mentioned something earlier about the possibilities to gain experience via mentorship uh, or internship or shadowing. Um, and these kind of opportunities, they're not published. You won't find them on indeed.com. Um, but you will find them if you're creative and if you um, are convincing when you introduce yourself to a potential employer. Um, so I was mentioning earlier, uh, when you go in a directory of uh, companies and you find one that, that's really interesting, uh, sorry, in your case, you were an IT student that was looking to find something in m management, um, uh, it was am I a correct? Chair. I'm just going to go back. A chair, chair. assistant, um, yeah. So chair assistant, we're talking about, I suppose, in a university environment, um, if, if, if this is the correct term, um, then you would need to get in touch with uh, uh, professors uh, in the universities or in the departments that uh, are relevant to your field and see if they're working on any projects that you could contribute to. Maybe you can offer your services on a volunteer basis to start off and once you've established a strong connection, um, you you'll be in a better position to apply for uh, openings, even if you don't have the required experience. And I also encourage you to maybe to contact Aya or Anna or myself um, uh, by email or by phone, because I think your your question um, comes with a, a, a lot of um, development. I, I don't know how exactly to, to explain it um, here, but I think it's a, we'll have to look a little bit more into uh, into it. Yeah, this is the this is the kind of profile that would need more of an in-depth discussion. Um, so yeah, I do invite you to get in touch with us. We can we can address that in more depth. Um, I I think uh, I think we've covered all the questions for today. Um, yeah, I again, think so if too. we if we there's something you would like to yeah, if there are some things you want us to go into more detail, uh, like we've been saying a lot throughout the seminar, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, just before we leave, I'm going to um, share with you a poll um, to see if uh, if you guys enjoyed today's presentation. If you can take a second to, uh, to respond, that'll be really appreciated. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to respond quickly, quickly to a uh, last question here. I mean, I'm interested for English and French conversation. Please, I want to know the website. Um, the website is, um, um, it, it's our website, actually. You will have it in the, uh, in the email we're going to send. So it's uh, Centre CSI dot org. O R J G. Sorry. So thank you, Aya. She just uh, she just put it here on her um, presentation. Yeah. Uh, hi, there you go. Thank you, Aya. You have it uh, online. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
So again, thank you all so much for um, for your presence today. It was nice to have something all together despite the current situation. Um, and I hope that it was useful for you guys. Uh, we really uh, put this together with you guys in mind. Um, so wishing you uh, safety and health in the next few weeks and hopefully we'll be in touch soon. Thank you all so much for participating. <laughs>